So at the end of it all, we ended up getting married and so I came out of the Navy then. And that's how I came to move up here, because he was from St. Helens. Ah, OK, right. So he was born in Howard Street. Right. So was was he in the Navy then? Did you he meet was in, in the, the Navy? Navy yes. <clears throat> and what was, his, what was his job? He was um, a stoker, marine engineer mechanic. They called him, but he was a stoker. So, so he'd been in, he was, a bit, he was a few years older than me, he, well, only about 18 months. He'd been in longer than I had. He joined when he was 16. Right. So, yeah. So you mentioned about your dad. <clears throat> so was there a bit of a kind of naval kind of, you know, connection within the family? Or as um, I can imagine coming from where you came from, it it's there, isn't it? You know, you you kind of obviously on the sea and. Yes, I don't. I don't know really why I decided. My dad was in the navy during the war. You see, and. Um, that's what he was. His other, he had a load of brothers. Well, no, he didn't have loads of brothers. He had a lot of sisters. But they, they were in the, one of his brothers was in the Air Force. The other one was in the Army. Um, so it wasn't wasn't really a Navy. I suppose I perhaps picked the Navy because I knew he'd been in the Navy. Perhaps, perhaps that's what I thought. I, I can't really remember what made me decide mm. um, to, to go into the Navy. I just got booklets because you could... There was always adverts everywhere in those days for the Women's Army or the Air Force and that. So um, I, ju- I just sort of thought I might like it, really. And, w- and when you were based in Portsmouth, had you built up a, f- a friendship group of people who were connect- who were all in the Navy or...? Yes, I yeah. knew by that time, you see that people are moving around all the time. So some of the girls who were already at Northwood when I got there... You get to know them a bit and then they move on. And some of those were at Portsmouth. So um, you, you get to a wide range of people, really. Um, and they're from all over different parts. But you, you do, at the same time, you lose touch with some of them as well because there wasn't the internet or anything then. You just had to write letters, and which we did for a short time. But then you, you meet other friends and you haven't got time to write yeah. letters then. So. And sorry, what was your husband's name, Linda? Arthur. Arthur. Yeah. And so you say he joined when he was 16 and he's yes. from Howard Street. Yes. Where is Howard Street? It's, you know where the station is? Um, Central Station. No, the town, Tato East Station. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, you know that motorbike place? Yeah. And First Street? Yeah. I, I think it's, it's at the back of the station, round the back of where that motorbike place is. Oh, okay. I think it's off of First Street, I can't. Is it Spring, I, think, is it I know. You, yes, you go down Springfield Road, and then you turn left into that little road. There's a little shop on the corner. Mm-hmm. It used to be called Metcalfs, and then you go. It's down that way somewhere. Right, and um, did and did he he grew up obviously that he grew up here. there until he was eight, and then they moved to Rainford, and he didn't like Rainford. Um, they his mum and dad still lived in Rainford when I first came up here, but they'd moved by then. Okay. They used to live in a road called um, Victoria, I don't know whether it was Victoria Street or Victoria Avenue, but it was a small road off of the main yeah. street in Rainford. And um, then they moved up to this new house, in. it's called Springfield, mm-hmm. near, near Rainford Junction Station. That, and that's when I, that's where I lived when I first came up here. So what was the reason for you, you two coming up here then? Well, we were getting going to get married then, because he... Cause he he bought himself out of the Navy and um, only after, the, uh, no, it was just before we got married he did that and um, he'd, he'd been in about eight years by this time and um, and he we came up here really because he thought he would get a job better up here than down in South End. Um, but it, he didn't get a job straight away. He, he used to work in a place called Foster's in Rainford it was quite a big place, like a farm, I don't know whether it was a farm or a factory. Um, but it was a, quite a big employer in Rainford at the time. And um, so I used to come up and then in the end, eventually, they let me stay in his house, in their house. His mum and dad let me come and stay there. So I got a job in, in a, it was a house, but they, they were running a business from it. They had a swimming pool and they'd covered the swimming pool over. And they, they, that was just doing sewing alterations for all the 
shops because there's quite a few tailor's shops around then and all the things that needed altering they, they had a lady who used to drive around everywhere and picking them all up and we used to there was about eight of us in there so I, I worked there for a while and then I went back home I was I was homesick really I, I didn't really feel like I fitted in somehow um I, I always liked the place up here but I didn't feel like I fitted in I was just homesick and um and we were getting married in the March then. And so I went back home at the Christmas. And um, so, you know, we, we, we've managed, before I went home, we found a little house in Fiddler Street, which was a bit of a slum really, but I mean, we, <laughs> you don't care do you, as long as you've got your front door. So we went and had a look, I don't know why we went, because it was up for sale and we didn't have any money. So I don't know why we thought we were gonna buy it, but when we went, it had previously been rented and the man said they were, I think they were due for demolition and he said the lady who had it before rented it so I'll ask if, he, if he'll rent it to you, which he did. So oh, I, I couldn't believe it, you know, we had our own little house, no bathroom, only one tap. But <laughs> and how, how old <laughs> were you then? 23, 22. I was, no, I was, I was either 22 or 23, I can't think now. I think I was 23 when, I got, when we got married. Yes. I was coming up to 23, that's right, yeah. And where did you so get married, Linda? We got married down in South End. Oh, did you? Right, yeah, okay. So his family, there wasn't loads of us, it was only a small wedding, we didn't didn't really have great big weddings in, like they do now, so um, it's all, most of his family, he had um, three, three sisters and a brother, and um, his mum and dad, and he had his auntie and uncle and cousins, and they all came down. Um, and we got married in a little church right at the end of the runway of the airport. <laughs> they couldn't believe it because his planes were taking off, you know, just taking off the ground as, as the church was there. And um, yeah, so, we, but then I came back up here into our little house and um, I really loved living in that house. We stayed there for six years and then we got the house in Leslie Road. So um, yeah, it was, it was, you so can, you can make a home, can't you? So he he, he was keen on he was quite keen on coming back and up up this way yes, from Rainford and yes he hated yeah. it he never and I'm not kidding every time we went out we just missed the bus you know because he only come up there it was a bit isolated at Rainford Junction and um, yeah so it, it it was a bit of a drag up there but I didn't mind it I quite yeah. liked Rainford myself. Um, and his sister lived there. She'd just got married then. And I always got on well with his older sister. So, um, and they're still in the same house where they, when they got married, they're yeah. still living there now. Um, but so, then, um, yeah, we lived in Fiddler soon. Then we had Graham, he's my biggest son. And, and then we had Peter. Um, and then by then we we got the house in Leslie Road. We Honestly, we looked at loads of houses because we couldn't afford, we wanted a three bedroomed house, but there weren't that many for the price we could afford. But we did find one and um, it must have been out. We had a couple that fell through, but then halfway through the proceedings and then eventually we found the one at Leslie Road and uh, I said, I'll never move in again. <laughs> and we haven't, so. So what, so when you, so you were working and doing alterations, so how did, what did you then, did you stay there for a while? And... I stayed there for a bit and then, yes, yeah. And then I got another job at a factory in Skelmersdale. This was before we got married, while I was still living in at Rainford. And, um, but I didn't really like it there. It was, it's boring factory work. And, you know, you'd be sitting there sewing all these bits up all the day. And then they'll bring a bag full back because you've done them wrong and you've got to mess about undoing them all. And, no, I didn't, it wasn't my cup of tea really, but you know, that that was all there was really, so. Um, and what was your husband, what? He was, well, he, he, was, he worked in that Foster's place for a while, and then he managed to get a job. His dad worked at Beecham's and he tried to get him a job there, but he wasn't interested. He, I don't know why, he just didn't want anyone's advice, Arthur. He, he, was, he didn't want anyone telling him what to do. He, he was quite stubborn and, um, but eventually got a job at Rockware Glass, the bottle factory. That's where the college is now, the tech college. 
and um, he stayed there then for till it closed down. About eight years, I think he was there in the early eighties, and um, we'd only just gone into our new house then. We'd only been there a year, and I thought, oh god, because I, I didn't work then. After when we got the the boys, I was staying at home. And eventually I used to do a bit of sewing. I put an advert in the post office and I got a few customers and I used to do a bit of sewing on a night time just to raise a bit of money. And um, so it was a bit of a...